In 2009, I abruptly became extremely sick and was diagnosed with the medical condition called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which is often abbreviated as POTS. Although I had a diagnosis, it ended up POTS was just the tip of a giant iceberg of medical complications. In 2010, I became severely ill with stomach pain, vomiting, and nausea. After not being able to eat for several weeks, my doctor sent me to the emergency department. At the hospital, the doctor decided my gallbladder needed to be removed. During surgery, the doctor found my gallbladder was inflamed, infected, and about ready to rupture. After surgery, I was given the medicine morphine for pain. The first dose worked well. However, when the nurse administered a second dose, my throat swelled up, my heart raced out of control, my blood pressure dropped, my tongue swelled up, I broke out in hives, etc. Based on my reaction, I was told I had an allergy to morphine. I was advised to stay away from morphine. I did not think this would be a difficult task. I had no intention of ever returning back to the hospital. With my gallbladder removed, I thought my need for pain medicine was far behind me. However, the gallbladder surgery did not solve my severe gastrointestinal pain. I started having pancreatitis attacks. The pain I developed during these attacks was absolutely awful. I went to my local hospital for pain relief. Every time, the emergency department doctor wanted to give me morphine. When I mentioned to the physician I had a morphine allergy, the doctor would tell me there was nothing he could give me for pain. I would interject that there were lots of other pain medicines which could be given. The doctor, however, would insist the only pain medicine he could give me was morphine. And since I had a morphine allergy, there was no other medicine he could administer. Sometimes the doctor would admit me to the hospital. Even though I would be screaming in pain, no pain medicine would be administered. After screaming for hours in pain, a sympathetic doctor would sometimes order Tylenol for me. The irony of this was that the Tylenol prescribed was to be given orally. Most of the time when I had pancreatitis attacks, my status was NPO, which means I am to have nothing by mouth. So although Tylenol was ordered, it could not be administered to me because I was not to have anything by mouth. The nurse would come into my room with the Tylenol. After logging into the computer and scanning my identification bracelet, an alert would appear on her screen which notified the nurse I could not have the Tylenol because I was NPO. The nurse would apologize for not being able to give me the Tylenol and would leave my room. After not being given pain medicine, Time after time, because I had a morphine allergy, I began researching pain medicine. Here is a list of pain medicine I found. Codeine is 14 times weaker than morphine. It is often combined with Tylenol to increase both drugs' analgesic effects. Meperidine, which is also called Demerol, is an opioid which is 10 times less potent than morphine. It is sometimes used to treat post-surgery pain. However, it tends to have a relatively short half-life, which means it does not stay in the body for a very long time. Tramadol is about one-tenth the strength of morphine. Some people say Tramadol works great for pain while other individuals experience no pain relief when taking Tramadol. For me, Tramadol has absolutely no effect on my pain. Hydrocodone is equal in strength to morphine. Other names for hydrocodone include Vicodin and Norco. Milligram for milligram, oxycodone is 50% stronger than morphine. Other names for oxycodone include Percocet and Oxycontin. Hydromorphone, which is also known as Dilaudid, is 5 to 10 times stronger than morphine. Hydromorphone is a popular second-line treatment for pain after morphine. 
Fentanyl is 100 times more potent than morphine. When given intravenously, the time it takes for the concentration of fentanyl to drop by 50% in the blood is 2 to 4 hours. This is a very short time, which makes intravenous fentanyl not a good medicine for long-term pain relief. However, fentanyl given via a patch placed on the skin has a half-life of 7 to 17 hours. Armed with this knowledge, the next time a doctor told me he could not give me pain medicine because I had a morphine allergy, I would pull out this list and start asking about these other pain medicine alternatives. Surprisingly, most doctors continued to dismiss me. They would insist morphine was the only pain medicine which could be given. After many frustrating trips to the emergency department, I finally found a hospital who treated pancreatitis on a regular basis. The doctor surprisingly offered me pain medicine. When I mentioned I am allergic to morphine, he told me that was okay because many people with pancreatitis need stronger pain medicine than morphine. I was offered oxycodone. Oxycodone is 50% stronger than morphine. The doctor told me if oxycodone was not strong enough, he could order a fentanyl patch. Fentanyl is 100 times more potent than morphine. I was shocked. It was the first time in 12 years I'd been given pain medicine for pancreatitis. Thankfully, during that hospital admission, the medical team decided I should start IV nutrition called TPN due to my frequent pancreatitis attacks. Since starting TPN, the number of pancreatitis attacks I have had has been less than five per year. What a blessing. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.